My name is Lane Reinhardt and I am Tiaton from the Flying Raven House from Wrangell, Alaska. Um, I'm also a child of the Kaguantan through my father's side. Um, my mother is also Tiwa from Taos Pueblo. And I am here today at the Sheldon Jackson Museum demonstrating Chilkat weaving. Uh, Chilkat weaving was used to create and has continued to be used to create uh, ceremonial robes that oftentimes contain clan crests um, that may depict migration stories from different clans and different houses. And the Chilkat weaving is a very uh, technically difficult and labor intensive process. It's very unique to the Northwest coast of the United States and Canada. A variety of tribes practice this weaving style, including the Tlingit, Haida, Simshian, Kawapiwak, Yiska, and many others are learning how to weave in this style today. Um, it has a very long history, and it's very detailed. It's thought that it comes from the Simshian or the Niska, depending on um, your sources, but eventually reached uh, Bakwan. Uh, through trade, um, through an apron, and there was a story along with that as well, that the women in Club One unraveled this apron and then they put, put it back together, essentially, so they were able to discover how the Simshian or Niska people wove the curves that we see in Chilkao weaving today. Um, prior to that, it was uh, mostly geometric based um, through the techniques used in basketry, but it kind of evolved and once we learned how to do our clan crests through Chilkat weaving, um, the geometric form kind of subsided a little bit more, although you might see it in borders or on the back of a tunic. So, and, and then also in the mouth of a, a face as well. And so today I'm here with you to give you some basic understanding of how uh, a Chilkat robe is woven. 